All right, we're back. All right. So that was our playthrough of Everdale. Uh, that was actually our second time we played. We played a first time, uh, literally right before this right, playthrough. Right, right, that just to make sure that we understood. Because yeah. I, um, I feel like the first playthrough kind of put things together. Because I was yeah. like, when I read the rules, I was like, oh, this is simple enough. And then when I looked at the board, I was like, uh, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> so, so it, yeah, it's a there. It's relatively complex. I'll put it medium, but once you get the hang of it, especially if you've played um, uh, Imperial Settlers before, yeah, it, that that's a big part of the mechanic. And then, uh, you know, of course, like we pointed out earlier, you have the worker placement, and the worker placement is very similar, at least um, in in looks and in what it does to Stone Age. And if you haven't played Imperial Settlers, uh, the what, what's kind of unique about that game is that each round, everybody goes around and does a turn, but you're trying to extend, like, do as much as possible during the round. And that's what's kind of similar here. Like, you want to do as much as you can before you go into the next season. Right, and to, so. because you want to, you're hoping to, to either play a card or, um, or, or do an action that is going to prolong having to go, like Jeb said, into the other season. So if I can play a card that automatically gives me a resource, then I don't have to waste a guy for getting the right. resource. So um, since we made that comparison, uh, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. Um, the, I'll, I'll start off since I was the one that kicked it. I like it. Um, it's right up my alley. I, I'm not, not displeased at all that I backed it. I, I think it would, you know, barring the bazillion games that I have, would I pull this out and play it? Absolutely. If somebody asked me to play it, it would be, it would be actually right up there with Imperial Settlers. I think, um, I, in some ways, I think it might even be a little bit harder, to tell you the truth. There is so much to pay attention to. So, um, did you like oh, it? Oh, I liked it, yeah. Um, definitely... Reminds me of those two games which we played before. I think we both have episodes on both of them. Yes. So, uh, yeah, playing this, I I could see what Mickey was talking about. I did enjoy all of it. It brings something kind of different with mixing it, them and having all the it does it works and stuff. Yeah. it works and I like and that's where I was going with. I think in some ways it might even be a little bit harder because uh, the design of like say Imperial Settlers like. As soon as you kind of get the feel for that game, you can really capitalize on your cards. Like, yeah. when do I need to do a card? When do I need to drop the, uh, uh, what's it, when you put it upside down? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, when you dedicate it. Yeah, you get resources so, it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I, all I have to do is drop this over here. You don't have that luxury in the game. The cards over here are almost like, they're going to add just a teeny bit. And you almost need to be, like planning in advance, is that production thing going to help me when I either hit spring or autumn? Yeah. Um, and the, and then um, even bigger than that, it's like, is this thing going to help me end, end game? You know, like, so some of these zero cost ones, it's almost like you better be looking to get them off the board. Right. So unless they do something really, really good and refill it with something else or, or hope that you're going to get some of those swap cards. Yeah, because I noticed my city filled up fast both times I played. And right. then I got to the point where I was like, I only have like three spaces left to put stuff in. I need right. some of the score me points. And, and I was kind of surprised. You're like, aside from your dropping the... Uh, the king was it the king? The king and the ever tree were my. The king and stories. the e the ever tree. You didn't have a whole lot of points. Okay, you're, yeah. you're the, and especially the skunk negated one of your cards yeah, and does. a space. I didn't realize that was going to hurt as much as it did. Yeah. It really, it, that's uh, sucking up a space in the village and negating one of his two. A two, two is a, a relatively decent score. Yeah. Uh, on it since there's you know zeros and ones and stuff like that, um, so. Like I said, the, the, the fact that you have the worker placement aspect put in it and you're so limited until the last round, the planning is, uh, is, is kind of difficult because, uh, again, the, the cards, um, the cards are, are tough to get to work together because you're looking for, you know, maybe I can dig and maybe I'll find what I need so I can play this guy for free. Or how can I manipulate the, 
um, resources I have, and the other thing that's different than, um, say, the other games that we played like this, particularly Imperial Settlers, is there's no trade. You remember you could do yeah. the, most of them had that, well, actually all of them did, they had the trading the trade for, like, resources you, for resources. Yeah, resources. It wasn't a good deal, but, but you there. could do it. Yeah. So it was like, oh, well, if I really, really desperate, I can, you know, I can toss these two things and and bring and, and bring that in. Whereas in this game, it's like, I don't have that. So if these spaces get used up and I don't have a card that I can build to get something or I didn't save something from last turn, I could be, you know, holding the, the buildings and not being able to do anything. And there's also not um, from the construction point, mm -hmm. if you think about it, and you know, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but there's not a whole lot of stuff that helps you, uh, you like, th there's not the same component as building it for free. There's some yeah. stuff that like, can significantly reduce the cost, but you still might need something, and there's a couple cards that like, you let you do either card with a little bit of manipulation, but there's no like, there's no reverse thing where it says, oh, if I have the monk, I automatically get the monastery. There is none of that. It's like, oh, if I have this building, this guy will come live in it because that's where he belongs. Yeah. But there's nothing reversed. So that makes it a little little tough when you're building the city. And um, I think Jeb was alluding to it, too, when he said that his city filled up really fast, like, or he felt like it did. Fifth, when you sit down to play the first time, you're like, I'm never going to fill up 15 spots. And then all of a sudden, it's like, well, I'm almost there. It's not as hard as what it seems, assuming that some of the stuff comes out. So anyways, what do you got anything else you... Um, uh, I mean, I, re I really liked it. I, it seems like a solid game because there's so much you can do. Like, normally in worker placement games, I'm like, well, there's a good amount of stuff to do. You'll never be able to do everything played this and I was like, oh, it feels like there's even more because there's like the basic events, the special events, then right. like the little ending, taking a trip, yep. and everything in between, so it's like... And uh, talking about the variety, back to like um, the uh, like the replayability, the randomness, that type of thing, so now granted, we've only played uh, like we said, we only played one other game, but the one other game, all of those were gone. Right? Oh yeah, we got all, everything. We got everything there. there. We think... took all but one down here. We didn't get the traveler one. Yep. Um, I had almost a complete town. Jeb had almost a complete town, and it was just totally different. I think, pretty sure that every single one of these was different couple repeats up here but the stuff didn't come out to be able to buy it and uh and yeah it, like and you know along with what jeb just said about like there's so many things on the board there that also makes it like kind of like what i was saying there's so many things to pay attention to <laughs> quick interruption uh so when you pointed out we didn't get that three traveler uh, basic event. Did you should have got it? I should have got it the last game because I had the the wanderer and the ruins and then something else. Oh, yeah, the, the, the thing that you gave me. And I was like, that's super critical because then I'd get the three points from that, and then the king would have gave it another point. I completely forgot about it, and uh, that's just how much stuff was yeah. going on in my head. Uh, I was it's like, easy if there, there is a yeah. There's just a, there's a ton of there's just a ton of stuff going on. So. Um, yeah, I um, the 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 face down discard piles interesting. Uh, oh yeah, now it, that we know that, was it necessarily necessary to do the board like this? Probably not. You probably could have done just a square board and made it work just as right. well. This actually adds a pretty neat little element. If I had if I had one complaint about it though. Um, whoever's sitting on whatever side, it's oh, hard yeah. to see these two cards. Th that's minor because all you got to do is ask, right. really. And, I mean, the most important <laughs> part that you need to know about the cards, I would say even more so than knowing what they do, is what 
the two things you need right. are because what's going to happen is once any of those things is in play or if they're both in play that drives you to read the rest of the card to see if it's worth you actually trying to pursue yeah. you know because yeah. like some of them it's like whatever's down here isn't necessarily automatic it's like it's like well, oh, you have to have other things, or oh, you have to do something else. In the last game we played, one that I got was you take up to three twigs from your supply and put it on it, and you get victory points for those. So, right. I mean, but, but if you like, were like that, would have been great oh, for yeah. this game. But in a game where you were really tight on resources, that right. card might have not have been that great. Especially uh, think about maybe in a three or four player game when all of a sudden the two wood piles go quicker because the first two people wanted wood, or the twigs. Well, even with like a three or four player game in the autumn, when people start putting their workers out, they're not taking them back. So those right. spots are dead to you pretty yeah. much. So that's actually another thing that um, we, we didn't talk too much about. Um, I think it was a smart idea for them to open these up for... Uh, the four player game. Uh, yeah, because yeah. the board would be way too, uh, the w way too squished. I mean, it would right. be, without some of these other spots, it would probably almost be impossible to get a pebble. The pebble literally has one space for the pebble. That other, surprised me because I uh, thought that other one would be like a pebble and a card or something. And it's not. It's a. It's just two cards and a and a victory point. Yeah, I didn't realize pebbles yeah, were that the, important. The pebbles are are tough to get and. Kind of the only way that can guarantee you to get one is using the meadow because that's a shared spot, but that costs you two cards, um, and maybe that's a you know a, a, a strategy to to look look at later on. I think Jeb actually I think Jeb used it. I think I used it one time um, in my epic victory from the first game that we played. Which really was pretty epic. He won by like <laughs> what three or four? <laughs> three points. But the the beauty was oh, yeah. that I like I literally ha had I dropped I had a full hand and I had the castle and the king in my hand and I was a few resources short of okay. being able to build the castle. But I, right, had, oh, I was going to say, right before he's doing this, I calculated all the victory points because I was already out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm ahead. I think I've got this. this. Right. And then um, I had to, it, it just worked out perfectly. I had to discard six cards to get the exact resources that he needed to drop the castle. The castle lets you automatically play the king for free. And then Jeb got a sad face. Yeah. So... Uh, unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see that. You got to see him beat up on me. But Mickey but will talk about it. I will talk about it because mm, I, you didn't get to see it. But um, I like the fact is that he, I, I kind of thought he was going to blow it away and it was actually much closer than I thought yeah. it was going to be. And, you know, Jeb pointed out that it, it those saved my butts even though I don't know. Um, the big I, I don't know how much Jeb's going to leave, leave in about me talking about I was debating the monk ability mm -hmm. earlier on to him, and he he probably took most of it out because it's not important. But I was just saying, like, I was having a tough time. Right. Like, is that card worth it or not? I don't know. Zero. It put me. It put me close. And if I would have had a couple, like maybe a couple other cards that fed off of cards for victory mm -hmm. points, that yeah, could have snuck in. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, so, anyways. Um, I'm very pleased with the game, and... Another thing I liked was, even though it hurt me a few times trying to find the husband, the huge deck. Yeah. Because playing the last game and playing this one, we saw a lot of different things. Like, some things never even popped up in the yeah. first game that popped up in this, and yeah. it's like, oh wow, there's a good variety in here. Yeah, there really is. We, we saw way better variety this time, the first game. Stuff was still kind of clumped, um... Actually, the the I would say the first the first few turns we thought the game was just going to be a dud. Yeah. Not not we we knew the game was supposed to work a certain way. We didn't think it was going to work with the way that the things clumped up. Yeah. But then by then by like about I don't know um, somewhere right at the end of spring into summer, 
like we had played enough that even though we had some duplicates and things, we were figuring out, okay, we'll toss them over yeah. there, or, oh, wait, now I'm actually being able to build something, and, oh, this one triggers off it. So even the slow start ended up, you know, being okay. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so, and there's enough... And there's enough differences, too, between the games that I talked about. Like, um, I, both of us thought something that was really cool was the whole, you can charge through the whole game and leave everybody behind. Yep. Because this spot ends up being pretty important. And probably in a three-player game, I'm going to oh, guess very, that... Yeah. I'm going to guess that Jeb doesn't pull that move off right oh, there. No, no. you getting two people on the journey track? I don't... At, um, at least the higher-up ones. It probably ended up keeping this game... Like, it would have been even tighter if he wouldn't have had some cards in his hand or whatever. And yeah. he very well could have spent those um, putting other stuff in his city or trading it in there. Or yep. I don't remember what he had left at the end of the game. But, um, uh, yeah, so just a lot going on. Um, I, I don't think I, I, I won't ramble on too much. I think you get the idea that I really liked it. I, I think the presentation is great. The components are fantastic. The cards are nice. Uh, they're not, unfortunately, they're not linen, but they're, the artwork's nice. They don't feel too flimsy, so, um, that's okay. The cardboard is, is thick. The artwork is, is great, and... All the Kickstarter upgrade stuff is really nice, yep. too. Mm-hmm. So things to remember. Things to remember. Those daggone, what are they called? Now uh, we've forgotten again already. Occupied. Occupied. Tokens. Okay. We forgot about them completely, and we always remember like two turns later. Later. Um, that being said, I think we both agreed that um, it probably it, it's it's certainly worth the reminder. It was it's nice. It's always nice to have in a game a reminder of something that you need to be reminded of. That being said, forgetting to put them on there and being able to remember that we used them two turns later is kind of the point that I'm going with. I don't think that if you were bringing in another critter based on that building mm -hmm. that you would have been, like, it, right. it wouldn't have been... It, first of all, it's hard to do because a lot of the critters that you bring are in for unique. free are unique. Yeah. So that means that you would have had to have another card to toss it right. and then been like, oh, I didn't use this yet. You probably would have remembered that you had one, and then you got rid of one. Right. But uh, nonetheless, th that's a really nice little feature to like put that on top. You can't see his picture anymore, and you know that that one's that one's all done. And it's worth pointing out because when we played the first game, we at least I didn't even realize that you couldn't bring out duplicate people from the same thing until, like, I looked over and re saw the Occupy tokens. I was like, wait, we're supposed to... There's, like, oh, a limit. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to put so those on So just there, yeah. remember that there is a limit. You can't just bring out a ton of people from the same building. If, yeah. It's, you, if, you, um, if, common. You, if you get an in and you have three badgers in your hand, you're not going to get to drop all those right. in innkeepers on that one in. It's just... Right. It doesn't, doesn't happen. Um, so... Okay. Other what? things to remember? Um, One of the big things for me was um, in the first game was that I could bring out the critters for free based on the buildings that I had, the critters that are in the meadow. Because I kept focusing on my hand, and I was like, oh, I can't drop anything. But then when Mickey did it, he was like, oh, I'll, build, I'll play the critter in the meadow for free because I have the building. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that. Yeah, because remember, that's like an extension of your hand. Yep. I mean, if you play the game with, like, oh, whatever in my hand, plus eight all the time, that's the other thing that was kind of, um, like, really cool about it, is that you weren't limited to your, your hand. Right. You had always had that. And then you're always thinking about what does that other person have in their mm -hmm. hand. And I really hope it makes it back to my turn so that yep. I get the either the, the uh, construction or the critter that I want. Um, you know, and, and we didn't even touch the, um, extra Kickstarter stuff they gave us, because we got, oh, yeah. I think there's like 15 extra regular cards, and then, uh, 10 critters that are supposed to be more advanced, I guess, are part of, right? yeah, legendary, so they might be, I don't know if, uh, it said something about when you, the, the paper, I glanced at it real quick, and if I get it wrong, I apologize, but it was something to the effect of, 
I think everybody gets a legendary to start the game mm -hmm. instead of because there's only ten of them. You put ten of them in a 128 yeah, thing that's deck, be and then like it comes out, and if it was an ungodly cost, and what if it just happened to be that it. Every time it came out, it was the other person's turn, and they had, right. Oh, I got five legendary critters. You got nothing, Jeb. Right. You know, so I, I'm pretty sure it said something about everybody gets one to start the game, blah, blah, blah. And the other thing that we mentioned real quick is there is a solo version of this yep. game. So if you're a solo uh, player, we don't... Um, we don't review the solo stuff because we can't even make it through the games that we have. But I just wanted to mention it because it might be something either uh, looking up online to see if anybody else has mentioned it right. or, um, or you know, knowing the fact is that this might be your type of game with your group and you like to play solo stuff, yeah. you know, give it a whirl. But other than that, I think everything else is kind of easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and there's... and. And I, I wouldn't say they're real pronounced, but they were pretty good about, like, each season tells you what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, there's a reminder here that this is only good at the end of the game. That's very clear that that's the, uh, um, shoot, what's it called? Haven. The Haven, you know, so when cards reference certain things or rules reference certain things, it's pretty easy to find. I would say the hardest thing was... These event things don't really, yeah. um, unless you look at the setup, it doesn't necessarily tell you exactly where they go. But at, at the end of the day, it wasn't the huge. It wasn't that big of a deal. And one thing we were talking about was differentiating between critters and constructions. Like if the format of the card was such that um, yes. you could tell them apart easily, yeah. because they all have this almost the exact same format so like just glancing over you can't tell you actually have to read all this stuff right. so if like uh, Mickey was saying like if you had put the name up top or something uh, <coughs> right. just something to make the the layout so, of the card a little bit different than that so that, that was my biggest pet peeve with it was because the design was so excellent that I really would have liked the layout of the card to yeah. be a little bit better so that I could really easily look at my hand and know um, if I had a critter or if I had a construction. Now, we could sit here and argue that it's not that yeah. that bad because once you get used to it, like I, I pointed out before, the critters are the berries, and the critters usually have a building associated yeah. with them. The building doesn't have a... It has a critter associated with it, but it's down in the corner. The bottom right. Right. The top left. And, yeah. and then it has um, the resources that it's required to build. But my point was, if you would have like, if if they would have put like a different um, scheme, like either like the banner up top for either you know whichever way you want to do it, leave it here for critters and put it up here for um, constructions or vice versa, that might have helped. Or uh, it had a different border. Now, if they go different border, you might have been able to, you might be able to see what's coming yeah. up in the deck and that might have been a, a, a concern. I still think there might have been something that you could have done to make it just a little bit easier. It's not a horrible thing, it's just kind of a pet peeve from playing a, a lot of different games that, you know, usually when they have, when you're mixing things and they're so important like that, usually there's some kind of identifying factor that it makes it really easy to be like, hey, I have this and I, now by the second game, I was getting in the habit of taking like my critter cards mm -hmm. and lining them up in my hand like this, so that all the top banners were in a uh, row. Yeah, I started doing that like halfway through this game. You know, so when I glanced at my hand, I always knew that. Oh wait, this is all my critters. Now I still had to go and look at them. So like I said, it's not. It it wasn't horrible. It would have just something. It just would have been. It, it would have been nice yeah. if it looked just a little bit different. In my opinion, right. might not bother anybody else. A little pet peeve. All right. So I think that's everything. All uh, right.
Yeah, so we both enjoyed the game. Yep, um, very much, very much. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if we did anything wrong, just leave comments yep. uh, in the video. Yep. You can cool. email us, whatever. And hopefully we caught the things we did wrong, right? Yeah, there's going to be some pop-ups. Yeah, there's going to be a few pop-ups. We missed the ruins, right? Yep. Um, the discard we missed, pile. We missed the discard pile. We missed this multiple times. We already touched on that. Um, I think those were the big ones. I think, yeah, I do think those those were uh, yeah. some the the bigger ones that we missed. Um, and actually, the discard pile wasn't even that big of a deal until Jeff Only threw one, the, card. one card yeah. that we saw so far that even messes yeah. with it. Uh, so, anyways, um, hope you hope you liked it. Yeah. And if you have any videos you want to see, uh, let us know. We'll yeah. try to get to those games. Give us thumbs up. Um, subscribe please Let like, us us on, like, it. like us on Facebook yeah definitely subscribe on YouTube um, we have a coffee cup for tips uh, yep. I don't remember how you spell coffee Still, but it's, it's in the link below C-O-F-F -F is not right C-O-F-F or something, okay, or something yeah. like that <laughs> and uh, you know because um, oh you know what we I don't know if this is a good time to mention it well, why not but we did have a winner for a, a giveaway game oh yeah that, yeah, we, that uh, we had what was it, Jungle? Um, no, nope. Torres. It was Torres and... We hit we get, 550? Yep, and we he for. had commented on it that he wanted the game, and that's all we asked anybody to do. He was the only one did. He, he yeah. was the only one did, so he gets the game. It was um, it was Gary Stitely that won, yep. and he actually plays games with us sometimes. Yeah. But <laughs> it wasn't he was, rigged. He was the only he was one, one, one it, that so. put it down there, <laughs> yeah. and it was before he even noticed it. It had been up there for a oh, month yeah. at least, so... I guess he was just watching it, the video and he saw it. just happened to watch the video all the way so through. watch our yeah. videos. <laughs> yep, so watch the videos all the way through, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll toss some more more stuff. Yep. And if you happen to be... Um, if you happen to be a um, company that wants something tested... Oh, yeah, yeah. we guys. do that stuff, too. So. All right. All right, okay, so see until you. next time. Boards and booze. Booze and boards. With Mickey and Jeb.